Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the D-Max disc brakes for 7,000 pound axles with 13 inch rotors on a 2020 Keystone Montana. Now what kind of sets these apart is definitely going to be the rotor design and you're going to notice right away we have these holes here on our hat of the rotor and what makes that a little bit more unique than your typical one is not only is it going to cool because that heat is going to be able to have kind of dissipate through those holes but also it's really important for anyone that does any marine uh, usage of their trailer or even driving in inclement weather where water kind of gets caught in the back side of this and the problem with other rotors is that water just kind of spins around and as you park it's going to sit at the bottom and if you park your trailer for a while that's going to eat away at that rotor and this actually allows it for it to drain out. Another great part about this is when they're able to put the coating on the rotor, it gets nice and uniform. There's no drip marks. So again, you get a little bit more uniformity and overall a better quality. Now what also sets these apart and really comes down to being heavy duty is going to be a robust caliper design. It's 28% thicker uh, than your standard calipers out there. And it's going to promote a little bit more even pad wear. It also prevents the caliper from splitting. So over time, these can kind of get thin here. And when that cracks, well, there goes your brakes. Now, many times with other brakes, you are kind of left with only a few different ways to mount up where your caliper is going to go. And you can see there's plenty of holes available. You can really mount this in a number of different ways. So for clearance issues, that makes it nice and easy. You also have two bleed screws, so you're able to bleed it from a number of different locations. So you are able to do that at 120 degrees, whereas normally when you're bleeding, you're stuck with 90 degrees, and that's just gonna kind of limit you and just make it a little bit more tricky in as far as getting these installed. So here on our caliper, you can see our two bleed screws here. What's really nice too is they've laser etched on the back here to let you know that you have both of these able to bleed, but also they give you the torque settings for when putting your caliper, caliper bolts in place. So that's really nice if you do take these off and you go, uh, I forget the torque setting, no problem, it's on here. And that's really just kind of uh, goes to the quality of their products. They've really taken a lot of time to make sure that there's quality in every step of the way. And that even goes to your brass fitting here. It's quite a bit thicker than some of the other ones you've seen. And you're able to actually get a wrench on here if you have to rotate it and not really worry about cracking it. Um, some of your other brass fittings, you got to be real careful because that can snap. This one's definitely a little bit more robust. These will come standard with Kevlar brake pads. Having Kevlar means that you're going to have much longer life. And also the design of the brake pads is really nice too because you have these metal dowels here as well as a kind of unique clip here. And that just really makes sure that these aren't going to be popping out anytime. So with that pressure against the rotor, it really does just kind of keep this in place. You can see once we have this snapped in, those are going to keep these nice and aligned. The internal seals on our brake piston are going to be EPDM rubber, which is definitely made for holding up to a lot of high temperatures as well as cold temperatures. And it is really great stuff. It's made in the US and that's gonna really prolong the life of the piston and really the main uh, moving mechanism of your brake. So that means that your caliper, you shouldn't have to replace for a long time. Now your dust boot here on your grease cap is going to be made of silicone. This can be exposed to UV and it's not going to break down over time. As we've seen, uh, some of the other uh, rubbers that they use will start to get brittle and crack and then you have grease coming out of them. Now here we have an integrated hub and rotor one piece assembly, which is really nice. It's going to keep any uneven wear on the rotor down to a minimum because you don't have that uh, kind of moving around. It's all one piece and that's just going to keep it nice and solid. Now, as far as the other components that you'll need, you are going to need to pick up hydraulic line kit uh, and also an actuator. And when choosing an actuator, make sure you get one that's rated for 1600 PSI minimum for these to operate. Now, if you're wondering about the quality and just overall how they perform compared to those uh, out on the market. They've done third-party independent testing and these with flying colors passed. They've also passed plenty of SAE tests that other brake manufacturers aren't actually required to do. And they're also contracted by the military for some of their vehicles to use them. So if that's not enough, we've also done a little bit of a test on our own with the electric drum brakes before, and we're gonna do an after. So stick around and see how it performs. It's not exactly out on the highway testing, but what we've done is we've gotten up to about 15 miles per hour in our park parking lot and just use the trailer brakes at full gain and allowed the drum brakes to do what they can to stop it. 
Now we've gone ahead and done the exact same braking test, now just with our D-Max brakes installed. Now for a quick visual reference, you can see our cone over here to my left, and uh, that's where the front of the truck was before with his drum brakes. Um, you can kind of see where his truck is now. So obviously it's made a huge difference. We went from 117 foot down to 53. So more than half of what we had before. Imagine that being a car on the highway and you have to make a quick movement. Instead of being there, you can be here. Now to begin our installation, ours is all gonna be done on a lift, which we have here at the shop. And more than likely you don't have that at your house. So you're gonna to wanna to get some heavy duty jack stands and also a floor jack, and you may have to do one at a time, just kind of alternating. But we're gonna show you how to do it on one of these, and the rest of the process is gonna be identical for the rest of your wheels. So go ahead, and you can get your wheel taken off. With our wheel out of the way, we're gonna pop off our grease cap here, and it's pretty easy. Normally, just with a dead blow, you can kind of knock this, and that'll give you a nice edge. And you can continue doing that. You can rotate it, or you can use a flat head to just kind of pry this off. Now, during this whole process, working with brakes, it's pretty nasty. You're gonna have a lot of grease. So I recommend not only having a bunch of nitrile gloves ready, but also some shop towels, um, and also clothes that you don't mind getting dirty. But we'll move ahead here. And first thing we're gonna do is take off our axle nut cap here. And this is pretty easy to just pry off. Uh, you can kind of just wedge this between the axle nut and the clip. Just kind of work this edge here and it's going to unclip from the back side of that axle nut. And you are going to want to retain this. We are going to be reusing this as well as the axle nut. So you can clean these up and that way it's ready for reinstallation. Now your axle nut normally isn't terribly tight. In fact, I didn't even touch this with a socket, but if yours is a little bit tight, you're going to want an inch and a half socket just to kind of get that loosened up. So we'll pull this off. Now we're going to grab the outer assembly here of our drum brake. And you may have some bearings dropping out, so just be careful there. And you can see this one, it's seen better days. And either way, moving up to a disc brake is going to make this a lot nicer and overall just a better experience. Now something I'll point out is we have our bolts here that are attaching to the axle. We actually have new hardware that we're gonna be using, so uh, we don't actually have to retain these, which is really nice. Uh, some other kits, you do have to reuse your hardware, but ours are gonna be a 9 16th nut, so we'll go ahead, get these taken off. And normally your wheel studs are gonna stay kind of in place. They have a spline on them. Uh, if they pop out, not to worry. And this one did. A lot of them will probably just stay in place. The impact probably kind of spun that loose. Now this should come loose pretty easily. If it does kind of, over time, heat will kind of adhere it onto our axle. You may need to knock it with a dead blow, but it should come off pretty easily. And you are gonna have some electrical cables attached for the electric portion of these uh, drum brakes. So go ahead, you can snip those. I've already gone ahead and done that. So I'll go ahead and set our old assemblies aside. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of clean up our spindle while we're here. Just kind of get that old grease off as we're gonna be putting new grease on shortly. Like I said, you're gonna be going through quite a bit of shop towels and potentially gloves here, so definitely have those handy. And then with that cleaned out, we're gonna get these wheel studs popped out. As I mentioned before, we have the new hardware that's included. So to get these out, we saw this one's already loose. They do have splines, so really all you have to do is hit these with a hammer. And if you want to keep the hardware, you can do that. Um, I recommend putting the nut back on, that way it doesn't mushroom the head of this, and then just knock that with a hammer, and that should come loose. So now we're gonna take our caliper bracket and get this in place. It's really nice, they have rotor side already um, kind of pressed into this, so that's nice to know that you have uh, the proper way to set this. It really won't go together unless you have it all properly done, but again, that's pretty nice to have. So these outside ears here should be sticking towards you. Um, now, as far as getting this aligned, it is kind of up to you how you want to set this up. Um, you have multiple mounting options, so you can see the holes line up here, but you're able to rotate this to get kind of the caliper placement that you want, which is really nice for different applications. Um, so we're going to go ahead right about here, and we're going to be using the new hardware that's found in the kit. So we have uh, the stainless bolt here, 
Now something else I'll mention is before putting your hardware in place, I put a little bit of anti-seize on these because over time as uh, brakes get pretty hot, it's very possible that these will seize up and if you ever do have to pull your brakes off or do any work to them, uh, you'll be thanking yourself that you put some anti-seize on there. So make sure you do that before putting your hardware in. And we're gonna be finishing up with a nylon lock nut. So I'm just gonna hand tighten this on. Now it can get a little bit tight on this back side, so you might have to have that nut in place and then thread the bolt from the front. But for now, I'm just gonna get a couple threads started on all of our holes, and that way we have it in place. So we've taken those old five wheel studs out. We put our new five bolts and nuts in place. Now I'm gonna tighten these down and normally I like to tighten on the nut side. It's kind of a better way to tighten things. But again, as I mentioned, it's kind of tight back there so I'm not able to get a socket on it. So I'm gonna zip these down using a 9 16th socket with a 9 16th wrench on the back side. Um, now you don't have to get crazy here as far as tightening down too much because we're gonna come back with a torque wrench just to kind of make sure that these are all uh, torque down properly and when tightening these you do want to do a star pattern just as you would your lug nuts just to make sure that it's tightening down evenly now we're going to go back in that same star pattern and instead of using my electric ratchet i'm going to be using a torque wrench now chances are if you're doing brakes on your rv you have one of these at home so i'm just going to torque these all down to spec Next, we're going to pack our bearings with grease and get these uh, in the rotor hub assembly. So we'll start with our larger bearings going to go on the back side of the rotor. And you can get a grease packing um, apparatus to get the grease in here. But the old school method is just kind of to take a handful of grease and kind of use your palm to press this in. Make sure that you're rolling the inner uh, brace around. Make sure that it's evenly coated. You really can't overpack these. Just make sure that everything's nice and coated. Um, these are going to see a lot of rotation, so you want to make sure that everything's protected. Now, as far as grease goes, uh, we're just going to use some high temp red grease, which is going to be for wheel bearings. So just go ahead and apply pretty heavily to these. So again, just kind of like a scooping method, kind of get this packed in that section in between. And if you need some uh, high temperature wheel bearing grease. We do have some of that here at e-trailer. You can pick that up and have it ready to go uh, during your installation. And once you kind of coat everything in, this should be nice and filled up. Go ahead and again, just kind of rotate that inner um, bearing, kind of just rotate it around. Make sure all those rollers are getting coated evenly. Now before we get our bearing in place, we're also going to want to coat this inside here. And then if you can reach through and grab that front portion where our a uh, smaller bearing will go. You're also going to want to coat that. While you have your gloves on and the grease out, you also want to put just a light coating over the spindle. So just kind of make sure that all your surfaces are coated here as well. Now we're going to take our bearing and just kind of put this in here. Should seat pretty evenly. And when we tighten this down later with the axle nut, it's going to kind of make sure everything seats properly, but it should sit in there. And again, good chance to kind of rotate this around and get that grease moving. Um, now we do need to put our axle seal in place. So this main thing is you want to make sure that it's squared up before pressing this in. And there's a few different methods to be able to do that. Um, you can use the old axle seal and kind of place that on here. And with a, a um, fed blow hammer, kind of knock that around. You can also use a block of wood and that way you can kind of work around the edges, make sure that it's seated properly. Now you can also use a seal driver, but a block of wood seems to be pretty effective. So just kind of slowly work around. And as you kind of get a feel for it, find the high spots and just kind of sl slowly knock those in. If you go too much, it's gonna pop that in. So definitely make sure that you're squaring this up and going nice and evenly. And sometimes less is more as far as pressure. So you want this to drive in. It should be sitting flush with this outside ring edge. When you're done, it should look something like this. Now we are gonna get ready to put our rotor and hub assembly up. Now, main thing, make sure you have clean hands. You might wanna get it, grab a fresh set of gloves. You really don't wanna get any grease on the rotor face. Now you can always use some brake parts cleaner to kinda of get that off, but the best method is to just not get the grease on there in the first place. And now that we have that sitting, you should have it's about maybe a quarter inch gap, give or take. Now that's gonna, again, that might draw in a little bit once we start tightening this down. Um, but let's go ahead, we'll get our 
uh, front bearing in place as well. Now I've, uh, I've gone ahead and pre-packed mine, so we're ready to drop this in. It's gonna be the same method as you did for that larger bearing. And for this, um, I'm gonna actually kind of lift the rotor up uh, to get it properly seated. It might be kind of tilted down slightly, so just kind of pull up on the stud here and kind of wobble this around until we get this to seat in. There we go. So now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get our axle nut put back in place. Now with our inch and a half socket, we are gonna tighten this down. This is just gonna kind of seat everything. Um, that way we know it's all pressed in well. And you don't really have to get too crazy here. We're gonna go until it gets snug and it shouldn't really go much more. So I think that's pretty good there. Now is determining how tight it needs to be. Um, what I'm gonna actually do is get our wheel and tire and just two lug nuts on here and we're gonna kind of wobble it back and forth. We want a little bit of play, but we're also looking to make sure that our rotor's spinning. So you can see right now it takes a little bit of force. It's not what we're looking for. So we are gonna be backing this off a little bit. So take the uh, cap out of your, or the center cap out of your wheel. That way we can gain access to this. And putting the wheel on is just going to give us a little bit more of a diameter to kind of wobble this back and forth because we are looking for not play but just a little side to side. Um, again, that's just going to make sure that it's going to be rotating properly. Still pretty tight um, and as you saw before when we pulled this all apart, I was able to kind of do this by hand so it really isn't super tight. Um, and that cap is going to kind of keep it in, or our retainer clip is going to keep it in place. So I'll loosen this up a little bit, and then we'll try again. That feels pretty good. So at this point, I can go ahead and get our clip back in place and get our wheel taken off. Now you'll see there is a flattened portion here that's keyed on the uh, spindle. So this will just kind of have this tab that will slide in there. And then just press. It should snap over our axle nut. Using a socket too, as long as it clears your threads here on the spindle, that should help. But just kind of tap this in until it's sitting nice and flush. Now we'll take our brake pads and we'll get these in place. And it's pretty easy to determine which side is which. We have these metal dowels here. They're going to slide into this front section that's got these holes already there for it. These clips are going to go in this open portion here. Just going to slide this in and then our retainer clips, those should kind of just pop in place. So just kind of, if you need to, you may need to bend them in, but they should just kind of spring load in. There we go. So that's going to hold there. And then um, the one that's facing the piston here, we have a metal clip on the back as well. So you can go ahead and get this in place. So now go ahead and take a caliper and get your um, bolts lined up with our bracket. And we'll just get these hand tightened in for now on the top and bottom. You may need to kind of wiggle it back and forth to find that hole. Uh, just move it around until you get it to bite. And if you can't hand thread it in very far, don't be surprised that thread lock may cause a little bit of issues, but with a half inch socket, you should be able to pretty much get these tightened in easily with a ratchet. And you should see our slide bolt go in. Now don't get too crazy tightening these down because we are gonna be coming back with that torque wrench and using uh, the torque setting on that laser etching. We're gonna tighten these down. Now we're gonna go ahead and press our Zerk fitting in with more wheel bearing grease. And we're looking for the grease to kind of poke through our front bearing. So it may take a little bit to fill that up. Just pump away. There we go, see that grease poking through. So that should do it there. So with that grease through there, we'll go ahead and get our cap in place. And then really all that's left to do is repeat on the remainder of our axles. It's gonna be the same exact process. And of course, we are gonna to need to get the rest of our components in. So that's gonna be running our line as well as our hydraulic actuator. But the portion of our brake installation is gonna be complete.
Now once you have all your connections made, you do need to bleed your brake system. And this is a good chance to not only look for any leaks, so definitely check every single connection point that you've made to make sure it's not leaking, but also we're getting the air out of the system. And that was a look and installation of D-Max disc brakes with a 13 inch rotor for 7,000 pound axles on a 2020 Keystone Montana.